I feel like this is a video that I both am very ready for and I'm also very not ready for. So I figured just sit down, film it, kind of see what happens, what <laughs> thoughts there are, and I hope it's helpful to you. So if you don't know, which maybe you do, hi, my name is Anna. And as of now, like up until this point, my introduction has always been, I'm an MSW student getting my master's of social work. And right now this is changing, big monumental moment. I am an MSW. <laughs> I finished my program uh, sometime last week, I believe. Just feel like the days are born together now that I'm post-grad. Finished my program sometime last week and graduation hasn't happened yet, but I have completed everything. My final grades are getting put in, passed all my classes, so I'm getting my degree. And I did enough hours in my field placement, so the degree is on its way. All I have to say, hi, I'm Anna. I am a social worker. I am an MSW and we're going to talk about my MSW experience because I really love how many social workers watch these videos. I find that, like, honestly, I learn a lot from you guys even just in like what you tell me you do, what you tell me you're working at, your different places in your journeys. And I just think that is so incredible. And I think that there is like a growing social work presence on YouTube, on social medias and everything. But I do remember whenever I started my MSW program, I was looking for these kinds of videos and I couldn't find them. So that's kind of my motivation to do this one is that if you have an MSW in your future, or even if you don't, that this can just be kind of helpful. I do plan on doing a video that's like what you need to know before your MSW. This one's going to be a bit more reflecting about the program and what I learned, how I grew, you know, it's like that kind of vibe, <laughs> the reflection kind of vibe. But regardless, I've already asked for questions and so I'm kind of using those questions to make talking points for this video. But obviously if there's anything that I miss or that you want to hear more about, let me know because it's probably either going to be in a different video or it's not on my radar yet. So let me know what you're curious about because like I said, I hope these videos can be as helpful to you as looking at other social workers was to me as I started my program. I put some bullet points in my notes. I didn't actually like write anything out because I figured I want it to be as real and raw <laughs> as possible, but I wrote some bullet points. Starting from the very beginning, why did I choose to do an MSW, how I picked my program? For me, I got my Bachelor of Social Work and I actually got my Bachelor of Social Work in three years. And so to me, I just wanted to get the MSW kind of out of the way. Like in my head, this was more like my senior year of college than it was grad school for me because it's my fourth year. There may have been a little bit when I thought maybe I would work for a few years and then go and get my MSW, but a lot of people were telling me that while you're in the school mindset, while you're used to doing school, it can be beneficial just kind of continue on and then if I got my MSW and I wanted a job that required just a BSW like I could do that still but it would open more doors for me if an MSW was required to already have that and just kind of get it out of the way to say the least. I also think and this is a little bit funny because it didn't actually end up happening like this but I think part of the reason why I decided to go straight into my MSW is because at Alabama which I've mentioned a little bit before but I don't mention all the time I had a full ride at Alabama and it would have covered my grad school too and I would have been able to fit like this semesters of my scholarship into my grad school and so I think because of that it was always in my head of oh I'll just go straight into grad school because then it'll be covered tuition wise as well as you know I did not end up actually going to Alabama but I think that that mindset kind of pushed me into like oh of course I'm just gonna go and get my MSW as far as picking a program Fordham was actually like the last one I applied to for a while it wasn't even on my radar I had made a MSW application video the first one I have two on my channel right now because I did like a new and improved one the first one I didn't even include Fordham as an option that I was applying to because I wasn't applying to it. I think originally in my head I had pictured myself, I'd only considered all in-person schools and when I was looking at schools to apply to I really focused on the classes that they had offered because I wanted them to be interesting to me and so like I could learn what I was hoping to learn in an MSW and so the ones that I first applied to were the University of Alabama, Columbia University, University of Denver, University of Georgia. I think that I think that was it and those ones I kind of picked based on the life I wanted to lead in grad school because there's so many MSW options out there which is incredible but also I think sometimes you have to use just like a super fine tooth cone with the ones that you are going to apply to and for those it was like I would want to live in that place they look like good schools good fits for me for the University of Alabama it was going to be free which would be obviously very incredible and I hadn't even originally had Fordham in the running which as you know is where I have ended up going to why I ended up leaning away from all of those options that I just listed just picked and ended up going online with Fordham honestly was because then I could be in Atlanta which I had decided would be best for me coming out of COVID college years I was so super lonely and just not in a good 
headspace because obviously with COVID, couldn't like hang out with people that much ethically, I felt like. And I spent some really lonely years in college and I was really excited to just have people around me again. And my boyfriend, Zach, lived in Atlanta because he's finishing up his last year of college right now as well. He's actually done, which is exciting, but this video isn't about him. But he was in Atlanta, which was three hours away. So it was not super long distance when we were in college. But once I had come up with the idea, I felt like it was a good medium where I could be in a new location because Tuscaloosa just held hard times for me, you know? And sometimes I feel like you just need kind of that clean slate, clean wipe of, I'm just gonna leave this place and start anew. And I realized that it just wasn't going to be good for me at that time to move to some big city like Denver or like New York without knowing anybody when I had just come out of such lonely, hard years. So Atlanta it was, and that's when I decided that I would do an online program. For me, I took online classes like before COVID even started because I find that I work well in that way of just being able to like have a to-do list for myself and just knocking it out. I like that a lot more, I think, than sometimes in-person classes. And from what I found too, I think that I personally learn more in online classes because I learn from listening to the lectures, doing the readings, you know, writing papers, doing whatever. Whereas for me, sometimes in in-person classes, I felt like my time was being wasted, which is just annoying sometimes. And so I just honestly preferred online classes because there was more autonomy in how I learned what I learned, the time I spent, when I spent that time, etc. So, so the online part was honestly appealing to me. I truly do not remember when I first came across Fordham. Like, I don't know how I settled on Fordham, but I knew that at that point, it was probably about January of last year, January of 2021, whenever I realized that moving to Atlanta and doing an online program could be a really good option for me. And at that point, I had already asked like my letter of references to send letters to four different schools. And I just really didn't want to apply to a lot more. And so I don't remember how I came across Fordham, but I remember seeing the classes looked fine. It was a reputable school. It was a reputable program. They had a established online program because they'd been doing it since pre-COVID too. Like it wasn't just like an online program that just flip flops to online at COVID. Like it was established. And so it ended up being a good option for me. And I applied in early January and I think it was February 23rd. I only know that because I was looking through my camera roll yesterday and had like a picture of it. But February 23rd, I got accepted to Fordham and I actually got a call. It was a little bit funny because I was taking my nap, which if you watched me in college, you would know that I took naps literally every single day because I worked from four to 8 a.m. So I would nap in the afternoon, but I was taking a nap and I my phone went off and it was a number I didn't know, but it said from New York and I was like, mm, that could be important. Usually I don't answer numbers that I don't know, but this time I did and I answered it and it was an admissions counselor letting me know that I had been accepted to Fordham and also letting me know because I feel like we've switched so much that it's hard to remember, but like back in those early stages of 2021, things were still very like up in the air with COVID and like, will things be able to stay in person? All of that. And she had let me know that they were not offering full-time advanced standing option at that moment because of finding people with field placements was so hard. It was taking so many resources, but based on my application, they wanted to offer me a spot to be full-time and advanced standing. And at that point, I had thought that I was starting summer 2021. And so that's like what I got accepted into was to do summer 2021, which would have been crazy looking back because that would have meant summer 2021. And then I would already be working now. Like I would have graduated in December. Crazy to think about, but that was the plan was summer 2021 Fordham grad school. And I got accepted. It was a good location. I knew that I would have people around me, you know, have a support system around me while still getting to be in a new place. And I had money set aside that I could pay for the tuition with. So great option. It ended up getting deferred to fall. 2021 as you know I started in September because the turnaround between my bachelor's degree getting conferred and finishing and when Fordham needed my bachelor's degree to be final was gonna overlap like I couldn't be able to start in summer because they wouldn't have like confirmed knowledge that I had completed my bachelor's degree in time and looking back that's a good I think that was a good thing that I didn't just go straight into grad school even in the case of like finding a field placement and all of that so I deferred to fall 2021 and then as you know I moved to Atlanta it was May 1st, so it was actually just about exactly a year ago. I moved to Atlanta right after graduating from the University of Alabama. I worked for two months as a preschool teacher. 
I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but I knew it was just gonna be a summer job. And then in August is when my program started. In September is when my field placement started. And the rest is history. No, not really, we'll still talk about the rest. But that's kind of the journey of how I decided to do my MSW, decided where I was going to go. It really just was situationally the best option for me. And Fordham has ended up being a really good program, which we'll get into. So as far as social work, like where I was going into the program, because I know a lot of people have asked, do I feel like the MSW was worth it? Do I feel prepared for the field? Is it necessary to get an MSW? Those kind of questions. Anecdotally for myself, I do not think I would have been ready to enter the field after my BSW. Part of that could just be an age thing. I feel like I've matured a lot in the past year as well. Whereas if I went into the field after my BSW, I would have been 21 being a social worker. Not that you can't be, but I just don't think I personally was prepared. I think that I knew the knowledge of social work at that point. Like I understood the theories, human development. I understood where you could work. I understood a little bit of what social workers roles were and the different hats that social workers can wear. But I think I didn't understand in reality, like practically how to actually do that. And my field placement BSW really did help me learn a bit about, you know, like when you have a client sitting in front of you, what do you do? Like, how do you act? What do you say? It helped me learn a little bit of that, but I still didn't feel comfortable in it at all. Whereas after my MSW, I really do feel a lot more comfortable in it. So where I was at starting, I think I didn't understand the places of social work that I didn't know that I still needed to grow in, but I also knew that I really wasn't ready for the field at that time. Like I don't think I would have been successful to the extent that I think I can be now had I gone into the field after my BSW. So coming into my MSW, my expectations were that I was going to learn a lot. I felt like I was going to do a lot of papers. I felt like I was going to do a lot of group work. As far as my field placement goes, I really didn't have have many expectations at all and I think part of that is because I just didn't feel convinced that it was actually going to happen. I believe part of that was because again it was like coming out of COVID where you know we made so many plans that just didn't get to happen and I was really excited about my field placement and so I think there was a part of me that just didn't feel like it was going to happen because that is what had been true for the past however many months and so truthfully going into my field placement I just didn't have expectations because I never let myself imagine what it was going to be like because I felt like something was gonna happen and it was gonna get canceled and I wasn't gonna get to go. But then also like classwork wise, I had expectations of kind of what I was going to learn a little bit, but not at all about like how it was going to actually change me and grow me. And so I really just didn't have any expectations going in. But that being said, I do think the program exceeded my expectations in what I would let myself expect. But I really kind of felt like I was going in blind where it was just like, oh yeah, here's another year of school, but I didn't really get what it was going to be like. And I think this is fun too, doing this little reflection because like, you can watch this happen because I was vlogging during the entire thing, which I just, that's the part of YouTube that I really like is that like I can sit here and reflect now, but you can also see it in real time, which is just a weird, but really cool thing. And so I feel like really glad that I vlogged throughout all of this because now I can look back. So actually starting grad school, I was over the moon out of this world, mostly because I really did not enjoy last summer with the job that I had had, which I mentioned in other videos and have even already mentioned in this video. And so August, I really just got a chill kind of get things ready, you know, get my supplies, figure out which classes I was taking for sure, all of that. And then I think it was August 31st. So basically September is when classes actually started. And just based on the timing of it all, my classes started about two weeks before my internship started, which I think was a good way to incrementally add things to my plate. I do think it helped me kind of get used to the classes, but it wasn't necessarily good because of the online setting of my field placement. And like I said, I moved to Atlanta so I could be a Around people but like Zach and Jason who I live with Zach's my boyfriend Jason I live with both of them had in-person classes and so I was here but I would just be here alone during the day <laughs> and like know that I had just this mountain of school work to do which mental health wise wasn't the best for me in those two weeks which you can see in the videos that I made in those two weeks I was stressed out and I think a lot of it was because I would have these like thought spirals about grad school and about field placement 
basement about things falling through because again I just wasn't confident that the year would happen how I wanted it to because of COVID I was traumatized but I was by myself all day which if you do online school don't do that because I think that is how it got really hard it got better as the year went on because I started my field placement and so three days a week I would actually have places to be people to see which I think was really important because then on my days off it wasn't like oh this is just another day at home by myself doing work it was more like oh this is my time specifically to be by myself and do work and I felt more excited for it more grateful for it it wasn't just like forced on to me but that being said we're talking about classes for now and the classes themselves were challenging at times but I really really liked the way that Fordham had set them up I've mentioned this in videos but Fordham was on a quarter system and so each semester we had two sessions each one was eight weeks long and so I would take two classes at a time that were each eight weeks long eight weeks moves fast like it sounds like a lot of weeks and it is not it moves fast and I really did like the way that it was set up though because I would much prefer having two classes at a time that move fast and then another set of two classes that move fast than having four classes that are a little bit slower but I still have to keep tabs on all of them and I'm learning about those same things throughout the whole semester like I just don't like that as much as it was kind of like an intensive you know like I would dive into community organizing and it would be like entirely community organizing for eight weeks but then it would be done I did set it up to where my classes I got more and more excited for them as the year went on. Like I got the ones I was least excited for out of the way first, which I do think I was glad that I did, even though it didn't feel quite fun at the time. If you like haven't watched my whole MSW via vlogs, my first two classes were my community organizing class, like communities and organizations. And that one was entirely group based projects, which has its pros and cons. I think being online, being in different time zones, I didn't like the group aspect of it really at all. Wasn't a huge fan of the professor. Community organizing isn't really like what I want to do. So that was a hard class to get through, but I got through it. At that same time, I was taking a policy class, which again, even even though I don't want to like specifically go into policy, policy is such an important thing to know about, especially in social work. And that's a topic that whenever I would talk to people at my field placement who just had mental health backgrounds or just had clinical backgrounds, they'd be like, why are you in a policy class? And it's because policy dictates what we do. And so even though it wasn't necessarily my favorite class, it was really good to have to learn about policy and to write those papers about policies that interest me because it got me used to doing that in my real life, even if it's not my job. My third and fourth classes, I had an advanced clinical assessment and diagnosis class, which is essentially the DSM-5, where you just learn about diagnoses, you learn how to do mental status exams, you read through the entire DSM-5, and that one was very quiz-based, which was kind of interesting. We didn't have to write any papers. It was really entirely quiz-based, which if you're planning on getting licensed, good class to take. That one was required of us. Like it wasn't an elective, but it was required. At that same time, I took a suicide assessment and treatment class. That class I feel like was incredible, even just in increasing my comfort level, because no matter what part of social work you go into, you're going to have to deal with that at some point. And it is very good to know how to do it well, like how to do risk assessments, how to sit with someone who is experiencing ideation of wanting to hurt themselves. There's a desire to do self injurious behavior. And all of that, I remember that I just felt so, so uncomfortable with before that class because I just didn't know how to handle it well and it's such a serious thing that it's important to handle it well so that class really like changed my confidence level but then also my knowledge on that and then my last four classes I took a research class which you'll have to do in social work I took a trauma treatment class which was really good as well I took CBT and I took evidence-based practices. I think that the most learning I had came from the readings, honestly, in my classes because we would be reading like peer-reviewed articles. And so with those, it's like, you can see, okay, we did this and it actually had this effect on people. And so it was like, oh, okay, that's good knowledge to know because it made social work seem a lot less abstract than I think I kind of went in thinking it was. Like, it's not just like, oh, come up with something to say to someone if they are experiencing suicidal ideation. Like there's things that work and that have been shown to work and be helpful and things that have been shown to not and so I think doing those readings really helped me and then in the discussions just listening to my professors because they all have experience in the field which is just such an incredible resource is that I think what I learned from them wasn't always like the content of the class but just hearing their like words of wisdom going into social work was really good for me so overall like reflection of classes is that I do think I learned a lot and I don't think there was any parts of classes that I felt like were pointless which was really nice 
because I know like I don't know throughout undergrad and stuff there was parts of classes where I'd be like why am I writing this paper like this is not benefiting me whereas with the master of social work since I know I'm going into social work every single paper I could tell how it was benefiting me which was a good feeling and I think helped that motivation kind of stay there if you have like further questions about classes feel free to let me know but I know that they're so different place to place but what I can say is from my experience Fordham had really good classes and class options that really set me up to do well in the field, which is a good little segue into field placement. And so my field placement in, I think it was probably March or April of 2021, I'd had a first call with my like field specialist, essentially where she was just like, what are you looking for in a field placement so that I can do my best to find that for you. And I remember that I wanted a field placement where I could work one-on-one -on -one with people in a clinical setting. And I wanted a field placement that would really challenge me. Never did I ever expect that I would be in a jail in June because I think I never would have thought that that is an option. And so I was really excited, honestly, when I got my field placement. I got my placement, I'm trying to remember when I found out my placement. I think it was sometime in May because I was already in Atlanta by the time that I found my field placement. And it was just like an email. And then she also called me and was like, hey, wanted to let you know, like we found this place and they're ready to have you if you'd like to have them as well. So I was like, okay, sounds good. The only thing that kind of threw me off about it was that it is far away from where I live. It was about an hour <laughs> both ways which I've mentioned throughout the vlogs going there and back so that kind of threw me off but it ended up being fine and honestly in undergrad I drove quite a while to get my field placements as well I ended up being okay with it because it was already set up and I didn't want to risk saying no to the field placement just due to the distance and then not have one that I was as excited for or even just like not have one so I did end up saying yes even though it was <laughs> that distance away that was my little hesitation as far as like the interview process I know every school does it differently I didn't really have to interview because my field placement specialist set it up beforehand and like sent them my resume was like here's this student you know blah 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 do you want her and they had already like said yes essentially and so I think it could have happened where if I talked to my field placement and I didn't want them anymore or if like something about me just really threw them off it still could have fallen through but I didn't necessarily interview in the sense of we're selecting between these applicants like are you going to be the one it was like by the time it was already presented to me I already had it secured and so I did do like an interview but it was just kind of like a get to know you this is what it's going to look like will this be a good fit for you especially because it was in a jail in a correctional setting which not everybody would be interested in or feel comfortable in I personally really like I don't know being challenged like and I knew that that setting would for me and that I'd never done anything like it before and so that ended up being fine I do remember in the interview one of the questions they asked was like do you have tough skin and I was like think so <laughs> I guess we'll find out. And so in May, I knew where my field placement was going to be and that it was going to start in September. In September, I started to get a little bit worried because I'd already gone through the whole process of like getting myself cleared to go in, like fingerprints, background checks, application, had to like take a little quiz about sexual abuse. But in September, there was a COVID scare where they thought for a second that interns were not going to be able to come into the facility. And I remember receiving that email from my field placement that was like, hey, just so you know, like we're not positive that interns can come in. And so I remember sending an email and was like and what's that going to look like if I cannot come into the facility and I remember getting the response that was like we do not offer any online options and so all of a sudden I was like I thought I had this in the bag I thought this was a plan and now it's sounding like ooh, it's up in the air and so I think that's part of why I didn't have any expectations going in is because again I felt like it was going to fall through and those were an anxious few days maybe even an entire week again they were vlogged <laughs> if you feel the need to go back where I thought that I was going to have to like defer or something because because at that point it was already time to be starting and so if that internship fell through and they had to find me a new one it was likely that either it wasn't going to be an internship that I necessarily loved or I was gonna to have to wait until January to start which again would not have been the end of the world but would have been a scramble so I was so so super thankful my start date just got pushed back by like a week and it ended up being fine for me to go in obviously as you know I did do my internship field placement as a whole which I've reflected a little bit in the most recent vlogs field as a whole is what made my msw experience and i know that that's true for quite a lot of people but field is where i was able to take what i was learning and actually learn how to apply it while also seeing people with a whole lot of experience in clinical settings which is where i felt uncomfortable like i just didn't quite understand what happened seeing people with lots of experience just do their do their thing throughout the day and then also really challenging me to be better i think that part 
part of the reason why I improved this year, just in my confidence and in my social work skills and in my knowledge and everything is because they really did not take it easy on me which was not comfortable. There were really tough days. And honestly, they told me like, we have high expectations for you. And so they weren't really going to let me not meet those expectations, which felt hard and felt rigorous and felt like on some days I was like, do you guys remember that I'm an intern? But what it ended up doing, it was it really prepared me for the field because they didn't baby me. Like they didn't coddle me. They weren't even always nice, usually nice, but you know, sometimes hard truths have to be said. And so if I was doing something that like was not not correct or was not good like I would be called out on it which is a good thing but is it comfortable and so while like looking back I'm, like, I'm so thankful for my field because I can see that that is like what shaped me what made my MSW experience what has made me feel confident going into the field now there was a lot of really tough days because in my head if I got any kind of criticism I'd be like mm, and they don't like me which is not necessarily the case like obviously if they didn't like me they wouldn't be pouring energy into me to make me be good make me be better and I'm so thankful that they took the time and effort to do that for me because like I said I feel confident going into the field now and I feel comfortable like if someone is in crisis I feel like I can approach that and I can actually help whereas before my MSW I'd be like oh yikes <laughs> they're having a problem <laughs> best of luck. <laughs> but now I feel comfortable and I feel like I can diffuse situations. I feel like I can do risk assessments. I feel like the social work skills just make more sense to me. And I was able to build that therapeutic alliance with clients and actually like walk through them in a therapeutic setting um, in ways that they reported were helpful, which is crazy to me, but like feels very good as well. I know people have like really different experiences with field, especially like in MSW programs, because there's such a wide variety of places that you can be in field. But I genuinely feel like I I got way luckier than I deserve with my field placement. I kept telling my supervisors and everything as I was leaving, like I cannot imagine this year having gone much better. And in the beginning of the year, I didn't tell them this part, but like in the beginning of this year, I really did not have high expectations if I had any expectations at all, because I think because of COVID and then also just because I didn't know what to expect, I just kind of imagined it being like eh, a school year. Whereas really it became like, I am a social worker now and I feel that like I can say it and I can feel it. Whereas after undergrad, it just didn't feel the same. So a few more points to make because this video is long and I adore you if you're watching it because I feel like this is like me sorting out my thoughts. Like this is therapy for me. So thanks for being my therapist. <laughs> a few more thoughts. Because this was such a big part of my life through my MSW, I do think that making YouTube videos like this one, like the other ones on the channel also genuinely helped me in learning social work, which I know is kind of funky and I wouldn't have necessarily thought it was that like I think in my head I've always thought like oh YouTube's my little like side hobby it's just fun it's creative and since we're talking about like MSW and being a social worker here I do think that it really has affected my social work journey in a great way I think that making videos has increased my confidence it has forced me to be articulate in being able to say like what is social work or different concepts of social work all the different social work videos that I've made I have to know the things and have to be able to articulate them in order to make videos like this and so being like forced into that position I think has increased my knowledge and like I said increased my confidence in social work realms but then also just as a person I think with making YouTube videos and stuff there's a sense that you have to get of like not caring what other people think just in that like it is a little bit weird like the fact that I'm sitting on my bedroom floor talking to a camera right now and then in the future like 100 maybe 150 people will watch this video <laughs> is a little bit weird but it's kind of made me learn this year I think that like if I enjoy something sounds good that's what I'll be doing and I think that that increase in confidence has reflected then in me actually practicing social work in all of the situations that I mentioned before like being with the client the crises like all of that just having a secure sense of self I think is really helpful in the social work field and I think that you guys have helped with that which I know I say quite a bit but I just am so incredibly thankful and appreciative of the fact that like I can make these videos and people actually watch them and that like fingers crossed they're actually helpful for some people like that just feels crazy to me but also I love it so YouTube has been a big part of this year even just in documenting it which I just think again is so cool if you're newer to the channel there are playlists that like go through MSW so you can just see it unfold see all the things that I'm talking about as they happen which honestly 
I do myself sometimes. <laughs> like I hear people say like they don't watch back through their YouTube videos. I do, I very much do. But I think that's because I'm so like growth reflection focused that it is cool to me to see like, oh, where was I at three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, all of that. I just think it's really cool. So my last little bullet point was how I grew and I prepared for post-grad. I think I've already covered that quite a bit of like how I've grown, but to be explicit with it, am I prepared for post-grad? Yes. I feel like I am prepared and I would not have said that confident yes prior to my MSW. I genuinely, like I've already said, cannot imagine this year having gone much better, which I just feel so, so grateful of. Like, I don't feel like I deserve such a great year that I had, but I do think that the tuition money put in, the time put in, the sacrifices put in of being in grad school really did pay off, not only for me, but also like for my future clients. Like the fact that I have grown means that the work that I do post-grad will be better, which excites me, makes me feel really good. And so I know people have different experiences with their MSWs. I know some schools associate where people leave and don't feel prepared for the field. But what I can genuinely say is after undergrad, I would not have been ready to enter the field. After MSW, I am confidently ready to enter the field. And if you're curious what all that's going to look like, that's going to come in a future video. <laughs> My actual like post-grad plans and all of that. So this was a super long video. Hope it was helpful to you at all. If you're ever getting your MSW, if you're thinking about it, any of that, if you just are curious and like to know my why. I've, oh, stop. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I am so extremely thankful to each and every one of you who is watching this video. I'm gonna tear up if I think about it too much, but I love you. Best of luck in whatever you are doing in your life. Remember, I'm always here if you have questions, if you need me to talk about something, need encouragement, I'm here. I'm here, appreciate you. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.